Hello, folks. Today is Friday, February 12th, 2021. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week, and it has been a hell of a week. Uh, let's just jump in first with some exciting technology. If you guys missed this, this is insane. Essentially, Epic Games has come out and revealed some new tech behind their Unreal Engine. Of course, Unreal Engine is made to build many of the popular games that we play today. And this tech right here is the MetaHuman Creator. This is essentially a Unreal Engine tool that essentially is a character creator that is out of this world. It allows people to build characters completely like how you would make it in an RPG with sliders making the nose bigger, the eyes different, stuff like that. But with a level of quality and fidelity that is like above triple A and unlike anything we've seen before. You got to watch the whole thing to believe it. I know I'm talking over it, but if you click the link in the description, all of our story sources are always there. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. There is actually also a, a free sample demo available to check out. There's, there, there's also two videos. There's like the detail of it and there's also a video of just showing these characters talking and emoting and it is still extremely uncomfortable there's that uncanny valley thing that i think we're going to have for quite some time in terms of digital and video game characters and people like that but what is going on here and and the way these things can be created in real time is nothing short of like insanely impressive, dude. I wanna know what you guys think of this. Do you think that now in games with Unreal Engine, we're going to get better character creation systems? Are we going to see more impressive looking characters? If you got your hands on this, or if you can play around with Unreal Engine, have you made anything insane or cool with this demonstration? Just anything about tech and the future of video games, especially in this Unreal Engine feature set, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you get weirded out by the Uncanny Valley thing like me? Do you look at these characters and get kind of, kind of weirded out? I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. Let me know. But if we are talking about technology and cool new things, if you missed this earlier in the week, we have new gameplay, a new trailer of Black Myth Wukong. This is that Chinese developed game that is based around uh, some mythology. It looks a little Souls-like, but it also ha has seemed graphically stunning. Well, now, thankfully, the developers behind this game, not a very big team, I believe, I might add, has kind of put their money where their mouth is with this new trailer where a lot of it is just straight-up gameplay. And it's cool to see. We see the main character. We get to see a lot of the move set, a lot of focus on parrying, dodging, some aerial attacks. We get to see a lot of seemingly boss encounters. A lot of encounters are one-on-one, -on -one, which is very interesting, but I like seeing some destructibility in the environments. This thing, at least at the start, like, yeah, the frame rate doesn't seem like perfect, but it, this is starting to look like, like a next-gen-ass game, you know? I think it still definitely has some time, but it is something to look forward to, especially for Souls-like people. And just generally how they're gonna publish it over here, like what's gonna go down. This game does seem to be attracting a lot more mainstream attention than a lot of people expected. I, I, that's probably because of the graphics. The game looks absolutely insane insane, but I want to know what you guys think. Another interesting thing this week, a little bit of industry news, E3 2021 seemingly is happening. You know, E3 2020 was kind of like, Meh, didn't really happen. And then a bunch of other places, companies, outlets did their own events all over the course of the summer. It was a little scattered, but I thought we got a consistent stream of info. Uh, now E3 seems to be coming back and they're trying to take hold of that once again. And it is going to be digital. It's not going to be a physical event, but seemingly there will be some sort of E3 thing with announcements and news, um, but a lot of the parties, a lot of the developers are not yet confirming their involvement, as well as Jeff Keighley, who usually has a big hand in producing and putting some things together. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. June, when E3 typically comes around, is a long time away. So, uh, you know, let's see what happens. But in other news, something that is nice to point out, uh, I've been saying lately that we're gonna see a lot of game delays and every episode since, I believe, January, when we came back, we've been talking about this game got delayed, this game got pushed, blah, 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 blah. Not all games. Thankfully, it seems like uh, the next big PlayStation 5 exclusive title is dated and it's coming this year. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart has officially been confirmed to be releasing June 11th, 2021. Why am I talking like a newsman? Why did I say that like that? Anyway, that's good. All we got was this little trailer that essentially was just a recut of what we've seen. I thought it was interesting that they haven't shown off new gameplay. I'd expect that then to maybe roll out in a month or so, just in terms of like how my brain and the calendar and, 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 the, and the, the hype cycle works. It's cool it has a release date, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just, again, I wanna reiterate like, hey, some good news in a lot of uh, games being delayed. We have this to play this year, at least hopefully. It could be delayed again, you know, don't, but hey. Also in other news, an interesting story, pigs can play video games. This is not a story that I'm gonna say, hey, take with a grain of salt. No, this is legit. There has been studies. 
they did this in a lab, damn it. Essentially, UK scientists had a bunch of different types of piggies and they hooked them up to kind of a very simple rudimentary game where the pigs have to move a little joystick with their snouts to hit targets and they would be rewarded with treats. But then, um, apparently, the machine that dispensed the treats actually broke and the pigs continued to play the game when they were encouraged. I think that says to me, like, wow, video games really can hook you, take hold of you, even if you're like a pig. The report from TechRaptor does note that studies like this have happened before. Uh, monkeys, apparently, because monkeys have opposable thumbs, whatever. I'm rooting for the pigs because they're gross like me, so I want them to win. <laughs> to win going crazy. Anyway, another wild news story. Earlier this week, CD Projekt Red announced that they were the victim of a massive data breach, a hack, ransomware, so to speak, where people were able to get access to their files, to their source code, to a lot of their documents, and are holding them hostage. CD Projekt Red has said that they are not negotiating, and uh, they have had some files backed up and stuff, but now, apparently, places are reporting that the source code for games like Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3 have been sold for millions of dollars on the dark, the dark web. <laughs> I just, it always sounds so funny. So that's where that's at. What a wild story. I just didn't expect something like that to happen. Say what you want about the state of Cyberpunk or CD Projekt Red. That does suck for them. That's not cool. But with a story like this, uh, people usually come forward like the hackers maybe later on. So I expect this story to develop in the future. And in other news, we got some trailers and, and videos and stuff to link down in the description. The first is a new announcement trailer for Six Days in Fallujah. Yes, you right, might remember that game that was being worked on by Konami 10, 11 years ago that had a lot of controversy for depicting a very timely issue in, in world politics. Well, the game is being revived. It is no longer by Konami. It is by a different team. And of course, controversy ensued immediately. But I've been hearing a lot of things. I hear people just think like, this is not good. We shouldn't do this because of what it is based on. Yes, uh, but there are also people saying that, hey, actually, this is based on the real accounts and it's trying to tell a real story and actually trying to make an impact. Again, it's early, take it with a grain of salt, but some people apparently have seen this game and said that there's more to it other than just some sort of ham-fisted controversial game. But for something like that, we're just gonna have to wait and see because I feel like some video games can be incredibly effective uh, with war and, and the war crimes and the military industrial complex. Look at something like Spec Ops The Line incredibly powerful storytelling not based on real events where real people died. Granted, movies do it. I think video games just need to get a little better at doing it. Maybe Six Days in Volusia could do that. Maybe it's going to be a controversial, awful disaster. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to hearing what you think. I bet the comments are going to be exploding. Uh, but if we're talking about military games, bring back Full Spectrum Warrior, please. Anyway, uh, other things we linked in the description down below, Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury is now out, so we linked a trailer for that just as a little reminder. Also games out this week, Little Nightmares 2 is out. It's incredible. I absolutely love this game. I think it's going to make it all the way to the end of the year and be on my game of the year list. It's short, but it's good. There's a video I made. It's linked in the description below if you want to hear more. But also on the topic real quick, I try and link things that are interesting to read. You know, I say we got to do our homework if we love talking about video games so much. So here's a good long read about the making and the, and the idea, the mindset behind some of the creatures from Little Nightmares 1 and 2. It doesn't really have spoilers for 2, so you can read it. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's not super long. So go check it out. Now in other news, let's talk about a little entertainment news. So we know that there is an HBO The Last of Us show that has been in the works uh, from the people behind Chernobyl, which was an incredible limited series, I gotta say. I think they're up to the task here. And now we know who is playing Joel and Ellie. Ellie is being played by Bella Ramsey, apparently a 14-year-old actress from Game of Thrones. And Joel is being played by Pedro Pascal, which is awesome. He's It's like, yes, he, he's kind of hot right now, but I also think he's, he's very good in, in the few things I've seen him in. I think he's pretty excellent. Also, a lot of other people have made this observation, but like the Mandalorian is very much like hardened, disgruntled dude taking care of something he doesn't necessarily want to at first. You know, the dynamics of Mando, aka Din Djarin and Grogu are fairly similar to Joel and Ellie. So this could be interesting. Again, I'm really curious to see where they go if they are like a direct retelling of the first game or if they play around with it a little bit. I'm kind of open for whatever at this point. I don't really care. I just hope it's good. But speaking of things that are good, also in entertainment news, we've been getting a lot of uh, 
casting announcements for the Borderlands movie, something that hasn't really interested me too much, but like we've gotten the likes of Kevin Hart, um, really cool, uh, 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 Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie, uh, but now we know that Jack Black is playing Claptrap. So when do they make The Rock and just like cast him and just pull on make this uh, Jumanji movie? It is basically Jumanji at this point, but you know what, Jumanji was good, so... I don't know, maybe Borderlands will be good. Who know? Everything's up in the air, dude. All we could do is sit back and enjoy the ride, right? That's what we're here for. So thank you for coming around, listening to some video game news, getting caught up in the week. Love having you guys here. I'm here every Friday doing this, the before you buys. If you want to yell at me directly, Twitter and Instagram, at Jake Baldino. But of course, we'll try and be down in the comments. They get hectic, but we're looking forward to hearing what you think about everything this week, be it Oh boy, uh, that that Unreal technology, which is insane. Ratchet and Clank releasing, and hopefully actually that, that date remaining firm. Some of the trailers and stuff we linked below, including Black Myth Wukong. Are you into this or are you not? Are you not a Souls-like person? Do you just think this is like overhyped or it's still too rough? Let's talk anything about video game news going on this week down in the comments, man. But if you guys had a good time here, getting caught up, clicking the like button does help us out. We would really appreciate that, so thank you. But as always, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. Pizza's on me.